Um, so my name is Kate Richardson. I am privileged enough to be the managing director at the birth company. Uh, my background is that I'm a radiographer, so I do x-rays and things on various parts of people's bodies and CT scans and things like that. And then I trained as a medical ultrasonographer. Um, so I have a Bachelor of Science degree in radiography and then I have um, a Master's degree in medical ultrasound. And then as if that wasn't enough, I then decided to do um, a Master's in Business Administration a few years ago. So I have an MBA as well. So that's kind of why I'm qualified to do what I do. Um, what also makes me qualified to do what I do is uh, I worked in the NHS for, for quite a few years. I have been in the private sector now for longer than, than I was in the public sector. Uh, I've been at the birth company for 10 years, uh, which has been amazing. Uh, it's such a privilege of a job to work with this amazing team of administrators and specialist sonographers and consultants. It's just incredible. And I always joke and say I'm never going to have a nervous breakdown and become um, a yoga instructor or a Reiki healer or any of these wonderful jobs that people go off to do after big careers because I'm just so satisfied with, within my job and that commitment to patients and the team and growing the birth company. Um, it's just something that I'm, I'm really, really passionate about. So um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, my lovely colleague Danielle has sent me a list of questions that are common common things that, that people ask about ultrasound. So I'm going to have a look at these. Um, so one of the common questions we get is, at what stage can I hear a heartbeat on an ultrasound scan? Um, now, the important thing here about hearing heartbeats is really we shouldn't be using that technology to listen to baby's heartbeat. So the earliest that we can do ultrasound scans to see a baby's heart beating is from six weeks of pregnancy. Um, so we can see it on the screen, we can see it beating away, we can measure it, but it doesn't necessarily mean we get to, to listen to it. Later on in the pregnancy, we can listen to the heartbeat on the ultrasound scan. Um, so that's really nice. So it's more about seeing a heartbeat. Than, than hearing a heartbeat. And as sonographers, we're so used to pattern recognition that even just when we look at a baby before we've done the measurements, before we've we've done these, the measurement of the heart rate, we kind of know just by our eye, just by looking at it, if it's too fast or if it's too slow. And um, so so we're pretty good at pattern recognition and knowing these these things um, just by that, that innate experience. Also with early pregnancy scanning, Babies change so much embryologically from week to week. But if you showed a sonographer uh, an image of a five week, a six week, a seven week, an eight week, and a nine, nine week, and then a, a 10 week pregnancy, we'd know probably just by looking how many weeks you are because we're just so used to, to looking at that and because the changes are so significant week by week. Um, so, what stage would I say is the best time to come for? A viability scan or an early pregnancy scan as people call it to see that that first heart beating away um, as long as it's just a regular pregnancy and there's nothing causing you an extra worry or concern if it's literally to come and meet baby for the first time and you're able to have the um, availability to be able to come for an early pregnancy scan seven eight nine weeks is really nice because then you get a nice image of baby and you're getting further enough along that you can see some nice significant development on baby and the heartbeat. Sometimes when people come for early pregnancy scans, uh, it's a little bit too early and that might be because their cycle is irregular or for different reasons around the pregnancy. So sometimes it's important that if we perform an ultrasound scan, we might recommend that you have another scan performed in seven to 10 days time. And that can of course be performed with us or we might recommend that you attend your local NHS early pregnancy unit so yeah, so early pregnancy scans are amazing. You get to meet baby for the first time, check baby's in the right position, um, check if there's one or two. So head count, heartbeat count, um, and have a little look around at the uterus and the ovaries as well, checking that there's you know, significant pathology or anything going on, such as a cyst on the ovary or a fibroid in the uterus or anything like that, which we just might need to give you a little bit of extra attention in the pregnancy for. Um, so let me just have a look and say, oh, do I need a full bladder? So when it comes to bladders, it's quite interesting with sonographers. I often say we're like Goldilocks and the three bears because it's really hard to please a sonographer with the fullness of your bladder. It can be too full, too empty. 
um, you'll never make us happy. So we tend to say, come along with a foolish bladder. Don't guzzle loads and loads of water because if you do end up being delayed for your scan, um, hopefully that, that doesn't happen, but it can happen. Um, or if you're just over full, you're just uncomfortable for the scan and it's really hard to, to concentrate. So just a foolish bladder. Don't empty it just before you go into the scan room. Um, but if the sonographer needs to do a transvaginal ultrasound scan where they use the probe and insert inside the vagina instead of scanning through the tummy, then we'll ask you to empty your bladder before. So, um, yeah, the full bladder question is kind of, um, it, it's a bit of a difficult one throughout pregnancy. I think if in doubt, go with a full bladder and then the sonographer will ask you to empty it if, if they wish you to. More important in the first and the second trimester. But by the third trimester, if you're having a growth scan or anything like that, then that full blood is just going to make you uncomfortable more, more likely than not. Um, let me see if there's any other questions there. Um, are there any risks to having a transvaginal ultrasound scan? Um, there's no harm from having an internal ultrasound scan. Uh, it shouldn't be uncomfortable. It's less invasive than a smear test or anything like that. And it should not encourage any negative um any negative effects. So there's no harm to having a transvaginal ultrasound scan. It just means that we get a clear review because we're going in a different way. Um, and particularly if people have got different um, positions, uteruses, some people the uterus tilts back rather than up. Um, so it's the physics of ultrasound mean that sometimes it's challenging through the tummy and we need to do a transvaginal scan instead. Um, so I think that's enough of the questions that we've got here and I'll catch up with you on another video for some of the more common questions asked.